Elizabeth at Literary Princess. If you are new here, welcome. I am a six-year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read. Today I am here with a Shake Timber video for you. And we are going to be ranking all of the plays that I have read by Mr. William Shakespeare. And I'm putting this down because it's heavy. So I have been reading Shakespeare since I was 11 years old <laughs> and was assigned Julius Caesar in the sixth grade. And I have continued to read Shakespeare throughout my academic career, high school, undergrad, masters. You know, I don't think we read any Shakespeare for my PhD. I don't think I was in any classes that read it. Interesting. But out of Shakespeare's 30, 39 plays, I believe, I have read a total of 19. I have also seen performed an additional two, but since I have not read those, I'm not going to be ranking those. Those are The Winter's Tale, which I am planning to read this month, and Anthony and Cleopatra, which I think will be my pick for September next year. So, got 19 plays to talk about. Let's jump in. These first two I am actually not going to rank because first of all, it was a really long time ago that I read them and I don't think I remember enough of them to properly rank them. And also I think I was too young for both of them to appreciate them. And these two are Julius Caesar and King Lear, which I read in sixth grade and eighth grade respectively. I just don't think these are the plays to give to a bunch of middle schoolers because they're not easy. <laughs> I mean, none of Shakespeare is particularly easy if you're 11 years old, but I think Julius Caesar and King Lear in particular are just not plays that basically children are going to be interested in. And I can tell you, I wasn't interested in them when I read them. I definitely need to reread these two and then I will actually be able to rank them. So we are starting at number 15. And this one goes to Pericles. And honestly, I don't remember a lot of this one either, even though I read it more recently, a lot more recently than Julius Caesar and King Lear. I feel like I remember more of King Lear than I remember of Pericles, actually. But I was just kind of bored. I wasn't interested. I didn't care. <laughs> so it's the last on my list. I'm sorry to those of you who are Pericles fans. I just... Coming in at number 14 is The Taming of the Shrew. Now I read this my freshman year of high school and I originally really liked it. It's funny and Kate is a great character. However, as you get older, you begin to realize, huh, spousal abuse isn't very funny. And you basically get all of Kate in the character of Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing with less, in fact, no spousal abuse. So there is that. I would like to reread The Taming of the Shrew now that I'm an adult. I remember it pretty well, but I would be interested. There's also this frame narrative that never gets resolved. It's like there at the beginning and it, then it disappears and it's like, Shakespeare, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> So that's kind of weird and makes it feel like, what? And that and the spousal abuse are why it's low on the list. Coming in at number 13 is Richard II. Now, it's a good play. I, it's a good play. It's not that I don't like it. It's that I like others more than it. This is one of the history plays and it is following the conflict between King Richard II and Henry Bolinbrook, who will become Henry IV. I think Richard is a frustrating character, and that might be why it's low on my list. Um, the Hollow Crown did a great job adapting it. 
but it's just not one of my favorites. Coming in at number 12 is another history play. This is Henry V. Again, this is a really good play. Like, I have nothing against it. I just like others more than it. This is the story of King Henry V um, and the Battle of... Hold on. Agincourt. I was gonna say Agincourt and then I was like, is that right? Like worried that I'm mixing up battles from fantasy novels with battles from A, real life and B, Shakespeare plays. So the, I mean, the speech that Henry gives at the Battle of Agincourt is famous for a reason, one of Shakespeare's most famous speeches. It's fantastic. I just like other plays more than it. I think a lot of times the histories are kind of hard to connect with on a more personal level than the tragedies and the comedies are. Although I do have my my histories that are quite up near the top, I will say. But I don't know. I just, I do need to reread this one as well. But not my favorite, but not at all bad. Coming in at number 11 is Midsummer Night's Dream. I know this is a lot of people's top Shakespeare play. I, again, I have nothing against it. I really like it. It's fun. I want to see it performed badly. So badly. <laughs> but I, there are others that I like more than it. I mean, it's a great concept. Everybody kind of falling in love with the wrong person because of this interfering fairy puck. There's some great speeches in this. I mean, Titania falling in love with Bottom, who has a donkey head, is like, it's funny. It's great. I so badly want to see it staged. But it is at number 11 because there are others that I like a lot more. I mean, at number 10 is Othello. Now, I read this with a book club and we watched a film adaptation and I cannot for the life of me remember who played Othello in that film adaptation, but it was quite good. This is another one that I really want to see performed. Honestly, I think Midsummer and Othello could be switched in the order easily. I like them both about the same. I think I'm just always a little more prone to put tragedies above comedies because, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know why I like tragedies more than comedies. The villain in this, Iago, is absolutely despicable. The whole thing between Othello and Desdemona is tragic. And it's just a really good one. Coming in at number nine is Twelfth Night. I read this for the first time last year for Shaketember, but I had seen it performed several years prior. Who doesn't love, like, cross-dressing fun? <laughs> it's, it's just... It's funny with these, this character who's a girl dressed as a boy, but this female character is in love with her thinking she's a guy, but this other guy who is in love with that girl, but Viola, who's the one cross-dressing, is in love with him. It's just like, it's a mess. And then it's like surprise twins that just solve the conflict out of nowhere. <laughs> because supposedly this this girl looks so much like her twin brother that they're that easy to mistake for each other. Like, it's ridiculous. The entire concept is ridiculous, but it's so much fun. Seeing this performed, I was laughing so much. That's another interesting thing, I think, about the ranking here is that the plays that I have seen performed tend to go higher than the ones I have not. So just a little fun, fun thing. But yet at number eight is The Tempest. And this just has so many beautiful speeches. I studied this one pretty extensively in my undergrad and it's just beautiful. It's on the later end of his plays and I just think the character of Prospero is so well done. And there, like I said, there's so many great speeches in this. 
and it's just really good. Even though I haven't seen it performed, again, I would love to see this performed. I would, the ones with fantasy elements, I really want to see because I want to see how they do the fantasy elements. And really I haven't gotten to see any of the fantasy ones performed. I mean, there's a ghost in Hamlet, but <laughs> I want to see fairies, damn it, and magic. Coming in at number seven is Romeo and Juliet. Another one that I've not seen performed, but I have seen the fantastic 1990s movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is like weirdly true to the, the play in a way that a lot of other adaptations aren't. Like it keeps more of the actual lines than a lot of others do. <laughs> Even though it is like just straight up 90s ridiculousness, but it's a lot of fun. Romeo and Juliet's a classic for a reason, let's be honest. There's some great speeches. The entire thing is just utterly frustrating, but beautiful too. <laughs> I used to kind of hate on Romeo and Juliet because I was like, oh, it's so avoidable, like my edgy teenage self. But I actually really love it. It's one that I've studied quite a bit. I studied it my freshman year of high school and in my undergrad. So I almost got to see it performed with um, Lily James as Juliet and Richard Madden as Romeo. I will never be okay with the fact that I did not get to see that. I will never be okay. Coming in at number six is Macbeth, which I studied in high school and have not actually read since, but Macbeth is just... <laughs> It's so good. Lady Macbeth is amazing. And again, I want to see this one performed. I haven't seen this one performed and I want to. I want to reread it too. It's making me just want to reread all of these. And I don't, I don't have time for that. We do not have time for that. I have seen a film of Macbeth, but I want to see it on stage so badly just to see Lady Macbeth's speeches be performed and to see how they do the witches. Again, I'm like, I want to see the supernatural and fantasy stuff. I just, there's so many cool things you can do with it and I want to see how people do it. <laughs> Coming in at number five, yep, we're in the top five, is The Merchant of Venice. And I think this is so high up because I saw a truly phenomenal performance of it. Oh, again, I can't remember who played Shylock, but he was so amazing and brought so much depth to the character. So when I think of the Merchant of Venice, that's what I think of. So had I not seen it performed, it would most likely be lower down on the list, but seeing it performed was just so... And also the character of Portia is just amazing. Again, more cross-dressing fun and just like coming up as a lawyer. Love her. I studied this one in high school as well and actually did have to memorize um, one of Shylock's speeches um, to bait fish with all. If it will feed nothing else, it will feed my revenge. I could go on, but I'm not going to. So I just think this is one, it really makes you think a lot. And it's one that you can perform in multiple different ways because you can make Shylock a sympathetic character, which is what the performance I saw did, or you can lean into him being more the villain. I really like the sympathetic look at him because when you think about it, like he hates Antonio because Antonio has been rude to him about his religion and culture and heritage. And like, you, you kind of can't blame the guy for hating Antonio and wanting him dead. <laughs> like Antonio's kind of a dick. So I really do like that sympathetic approach to Shylock that you can have with this play. Number four, Hamlet. Again, I've seen this one performed. I've seen the movie or the, the Kenneth, what's his face movie? 1996, Kate Winslet's Ophelia. 
like Hamlet's still so many people's favorite like it's do I even need to go into why it's amazing fantastic speeches just just to be or not to be I had to memorize that too in high school Hamlet is such a frustrating character <laughs> like just do something do something but honestly that's part of why I like it because he is so frustrating and I get so invested in it so yeah I, I love Hamlet I would love to see Hamlet performed again I saw it performed um, by the drama department at Williams College back when I was an undergrad and they did a great job but I want to see what a pro what a professional theater would do with Hamlet so many plays I want to see and so few opportunities to actually see plays. Coming in at number three is actually three plays that I think have to just go together and these are the Henry VI plays and look this is an unpopular opinion to have these this high. A lot of people hate the Henry VI plays. I love them. First of all, you really can't have Richard III without the Henry VI plays. I'm sorry. It, it gives you all the context you need. Second of all, Margaret of Anjou is amazing and has some awesome speeches. Yes, she's, a, she's like a villain. I don't care. She's great. Is one of the histories where I just, or I guess three of the histories, because it's three of them. You really need to see them all together. You can't have Henry VI Part Two without having parts one and three like <laughs> just doesn't happen probably why these aren't performed that much but it's just a history that I was able to get really invested in and I have also seen it performed and done phenomenally and then in number two is Richard the third which you know comes right after the Henry VI plays Richard is just a fantastic character a villain, yes, but such a great villain. His opening speech, I talked about and I actually read it and talked about it in my Shakespeare Journey tag video from last year. <sighs> so good. We also get more of Margaret of Anjou in this one. So, you know, my girl. And I've, again, I've seen this performed as well. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It's just one of the, again, one of the histories that I actually find myself very invested in. And number one is Much Ado About Nothing. I think this is a lot of people's favorites because Beatrice and Benedict are just hysterical. Like their sniping is great. The final scene where, where they're, where they're, um, friends and cousins are all like well I you know you said you were in love with her you said you were in love with him and then they get together even though they've been like the whole time I hate you and they only revealed that they liked each other because they thought the other one was in love with them brilliant brilliant I want to see this performed too I have seen the very excellent movie um done by what's his name you know you know, what's his name? Klaus Whedon. <laughs> you know, what's his name? Um, from 2012, which is just hysterical, filmed in black and white, set in the modern day, but using the original script. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <sighs> but I do want to see it performed. Honestly, Beatrice is the main draw here for me. She is just so vicious there's one point where a character says to her she's like saying something nasty about benedict and some some guy goes i see he is not in your books she goes if he were i'd burn my study <laughs> and i just love that line so much she's just a great character i love their relationship it's like the og enemies to lovers i love it so that is my ranking of all of the Shakespeare plays I have read. 
Let me know down in the comments what are some of your favorite of Shakespeare's plays? What are your least favorites? Do we have any in common in the order? Are you like Elizabeth? How could you rank this play that I love so low? Or are you like Elizabeth? What the heck? The Henry VI plays really? <laughs> I know. Do let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.